We want to remember a legend and a friend. Dr. Charles Krauthammer, who passed away yesterday at the age of 68 after a battle with cancer. The biggest error that we make is to lose the damn war because we refuse to recognize who the enemy is and what it requires. For God's sake, why do you have to talk about that? The morning is over. The shiva is done. Uh, and if you're a, you know, if you're a conservative, you should be optimistic. I think it'll, you know, it'll snow in hell before uh, the DOJ is going to go after her. We all were expecting it. It didn't happen. That was the dog that didn't bark. Charles was the leading conservative thinker of his generation to many. He touched so many of our lives right here at the Fox News Channel. Uh, I got to tell you, I often found myself on the opposite end of the opinion fence from Charles Krauthammer. That was the case for just about a decade on Special Report. Charles was also, like me, a huge baseball fan. And last night, Charles was honored at Nationals Park in D.C. So, you know, you know, when people outside of Fox ask me about Charles, I think it's very hard sometimes to explain to them how he touched so many of us because they think, oh, how could all you guys know him? But Jesse had a very special relationship. Jesse, explain. Well, uh, <laughs> I was a producer for The O'Reilly Factor for many years, and it was my great honor to produce Charles Krauthammer for about five of those years. So once a week, I would get on the phone with Dr. Krauthammer, and I would transcribe his talking points about Bill's topics for that night. And then I would absorb the talking points, and I would go to the bar later and repeat them as if they were my own <laughs> to sound smart. And I love doing it. And I also remember for years I would DVR special report. Right. And then I would fast forward to the all-star panel at the end, fast forward through you. No, oh, and, no, and, and then I would just listen to Charles. And what the, the difference with Charles compared to any other commentator, when he spoke, everything went quiet. And you listened, and you never interrupted Charles. Not even O'Reilly mm. interrupted Charles, and that's a pretty tall order. Even my liberal mother liked Charles Krauthammer because he had a way about him. He was so rational yes. and so respectful. He was never disagreeable. And you could always kind of, as a liberal, disagree with him but not hate him. And he was never, ever attacked, if you ever realize, from the left. And it shows the kind of the depth of his power because he was honored by George W. Bush, the Nationals, Benjamin Netanyahu. I had friends texting me randomly. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear about Charles. He really had such a great impact. I remember the first time I met him face to face, I was in the D.C. Bureau and I had just come back from one of those crazy waters worlds and I was all cocky and I rolled into the green room and Charles in that kind of low tone says, Jesse, Thank you so much for allowing me to be in your world. <laughs> and, and he said it with a wink and a smile, and it just really made me laugh. So, Kennedy, we were in the green room, and you said something about what Charles meant to you that really caught me by surprise. I was, I was taken by it. It was wonderful. Well, there, there's something so incredibly positive about what he did, which was he opened a window of mourning and let people in on the knowledge that he did not have long left in this world. And there's something so sweet and honorable, honorable about that because if you think about it, the only time we really talk about people in these glowing terms is after they pass. But if you actually allow someone uh, into the end of your life so they can celebrate you and, and let you know what you've meant to them while you're still living. That is so incredibly profound and it is such an amazing gift that very few people are capable of giving so many people and he was able to do that. He had the confidence and he had uh, enough respect for himself, his audience and his very close friends and colleagues here at Fox and I think we will be forever grateful for that not only for so many people having the opportunity to reach out to him, but also as an example to other people that you can take this on with a, a degree of positivity and comportment that we rarely see. And, and I hope people see that as an example. And they're not ashamed of passing on to the next realm because, you know, as, as people of faith, and there are a lot of people of faith here, we embrace the afterlife, but we're terrified of dying. And, and there was such bravery and strength that Charles, sh Charles showed going into that. You know, I always thought, and the reason your words touched me, is that I always thought the idea that someone who was paralyzed and living in a wheelchair, uh, for him to do just what we do, to come and be commentators on television, to write a column, uh, boy, he was terrific about it. He never was self-pitying. Yes. Yeah. Rick? No, I mean, that's... He 
had to face something every day that was beyond his own disability. It was people that he met that weren't aware that he was disabled until they met him. And because he always, he, it, when he was shot at Fox, you know, you, you, you couldn't tell that he was in a wheelchair. And it was, I think that was his choice because he didn't want to be, he didn't want that as any kind of interference. And so when you meet him, maybe you didn't know. And I remember one of my, uh, one of my buddies made a joke about, uh, should Charles go on Dancing with the Stars? And I said, you were such an a-hole. And he had no idea. He's a huge fan of Charles. It was after Tucker was on. He had no idea that Charles Krauthammer was in a wheelchair. We, you know, he's a, he's a very serious dude. He's very funny. But the one thing that was interesting about him is that he never let this, whatever happened to him in his life, actually affect him. And in a weird way, it turned into an asset for him because it made him a, a man of ideas because he was limited he was, he was, he was in, a, in a chair for his entire life, and he made his achievement come from here. Everything was about ideas. And, and the other thing I would just mention is that we do live in a time when more people are healthy and they live longer. There's less disease. There's less poverty. But we have this... We have an increase in suicides. We see people that are dealing with inner de demons. And I think that's why he is so inspirational, is because he has every excuse to hate life. Every excuse. Does he, he did the opposite. He embraced it. I don't think I could be that man. I honestly do not think I could be 10% of tra Charles Krauthammer. Well, Maybe know, eight. That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's the definition of courage, I think. You know? Yes. When people stand up in the midst of dire circumstances. Candace, what do you think? I, I exactly agree with everything that you guys said here. Despite his disability, he will be remembered as a man of great fortitude. You know, his character, his strength, his virtue. People from both sides of the political aisle coming together and honoring this man shows you that he was a person of tremendous character. And look, he, he was happy with his life. And I think that that's the most wonderful thing. The wonderful takeaway here is how happy and content he was with the life that he lived. Well, you know, it's uh, interesting for me because I knew him for so long. I knew him before Fox even. Uh, and I'd say two things about Charles. One is that the sense of spirit and human kindness that came from Charles Cridehammer was no pretense. You know, you'd introduce him to people at Fox and they would be like, oh, Charles Cridehammer, and he would be like cracking jokes and mm -hmm. open with so many folks, just very warm. And by the way, Jesse, going to a baseball game with Charles was literally people coming up to him because he gave structure to so much conservative thought. A lot of conservatives felt hey, this is the guy, this is the intellectual that is able to frame conservative thought in such a way that the liberals and the left has trouble with it, that they finally feel that here is an intellectual of the right. Some people call them neoconservatives, but it was Charles who talked about the Reagan doctrine in terms of America globally standing up for freedom, for security. He talked about a Bush doctrine in terms of going into war. He gave the framework, and going to baseball, Jesse, with him, not only did you see that people were thanking him, conservatives thanking him for doing that, but you learned that the learners uh, who own the Washington Nationals love Charles. So uh, here we are, you know, you go in Charles' specially made van going down South Capitol Street, and here we are. You, I want you to take a look at that picture again. That's Charles on the big screen over the stadium last night as the Nats were playing the Orioles, and there was a moment of silence. Mm. But if you drove then and you, and you think, oh, my God, is this guy going to crash this van? <laughs> but you get to Nationals Park, and he had the best parking spot, Jesse, because the learners had a parking spot for him in the stadium. And I was like, gee, how come I can't get this thing? Yeah, yeah know, Jesse, I, Jesse I, I, now wants to find, find out, actually, get a van. No, I, and I know a few people that have driven with Charles, and they, it was probably one of the most frightening things. Yeah, that's what ever I heard. Wait, 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 wait. Charles is driving. He drives. Yeah, he, no, yeah. I don't think people are aware of that. Oh, yeah. Like, when you're saying a van, the assumption is that maybe somebody is driving. No, no, no. no he's driving it. Especially driving. equipped van. Yeah. Yes, especially equipped van. Mm. And I used to joke, I, I've said this before, that, you know, the most expensive car in the Fox parking lot didn't belong to Brett or Brit Hume or me, anybody. It belonged to Charles Crowdhammer. There you go. Kennedy, though, you, you, you really think he was uh, a man, a personification of courage yes, to absolutely. America. Yes, and, absolutely. And what an incredible example. And I do hope that in addition to some of the writing and the philosophy that he imbued in his writing, people also take away uh, the incredible lesson at the end of his life and internalize that for their own in the future. That's so sweet. Thank you, Ken.